It's been a while since I've done an, an unboxing video. And in this video, we're looking at one of these parallel port PC BIOS post test card units. And I've actually looked at one of these before, but it's this one here, which is used on PCI and ISA cards, and it works pretty well. But it does have a limitation that you can't use it on laptops or on computers that still don't even support these ports, but still have at least a parallel port on them. Which is where a card like this comes in handy because it uses the parallel port to read the BIOS post test codes. And I've noticed these are a little more difficult to find than that PCI and ISA tester card. This came from AliExpress today after two weeks or so. And that was the only place I could really find it from, aside from maybe eBay. So, okay, let's open the package. So, it's got the same kind of PC Analyzer User's Guide as actually what's in my pack here. You can see it says PC Analyzer on that. So, it's the exact same kind of book with all the codes in it. So, comes this little package here. Of course, I'm going to need a knife. Okay, that. And let's get it out of here. And there is our little board. So there's our 25 pin parallel connector. Along with our display, our chip that controls it, and some of our buttons and LED indicators. Now, it does have a USB port on here because the parallel port does not supply the 5 volts needed to operate the board. So we got to use a USB connection to supply 5 volts for the board to operate. And then it can read the signals coming off the parallel port. So I guess I need to find a motherboard and bring it up here with a parallel port and try this thing out. So here I've got my little testing rig for testing various components and all. Basically just a Celeron motherboard from an old HP computer. Put into a look at a little 3D printed case here. I have the original test card that I have in the back here. So we can compare our parallel ports right here. So let me go ahead and take a unit. And try to get everything in view. And then we bring the camera up a little bit. So we can kind of get everything in view there. And then let's get the USB hooked up so we can get power to the board. And then see if this reads codes just like the card on the ISA slot. Compare. And just like any USB, you have to flip it around like three times to get it into the port correctly. <laughs> All right. And so we have our electrical connections hooked up. Let's power on and see if we can read codes. So I can see the ISA card in the back reading codes. This just says FF. That's not really inspiring. Okay, it went to FF00, but again, it's booting Windows right now. But the codes we have on the card back here don't match up with this. This just has FF00. That's changed to 2204. So I remembered after some thought that generally these parallel port BIOS test cards are generally for laptops to get the error codes because laptops don't have the kind of PCI and ISA slots that desktop have to use their cards. And generally the desktops may not put the BIOS error data out on the data pins of the parallel ports, but it makes sense for laptops to do that because of the lack of, you know, connections they can use for certain cards. So I've got it on my Toshiba 4090X DVD here and it's running off the USB power on the laptop and when I turn the laptop on you can see it's clearly getting the BIOS postcodes 
Let's do the prayer lock for the laptop here. Make sure it doesn't boot. And so here we have a selection of various postcodes from this laptop here. Now FF will always be generally the last code you see because FF is the number indication for the startup sequence of booting the operating system. So that will generally always be your last code is FF. So on the operation of this card you have these up and down buttons. You press the down button and that will bring you to the most recent code that came up which in this case is FF and it's flashing 45 because that means we have 45 codes stored on the memory of the test card. So I press the down button we can go back on the codes. The other button here is our up button so we can scroll back up. So let's go down and as I'm going down you probably see this light flashing right here. That's basically just a little LED indicator to tell me that I pressed one of the buttons here and the top one is just to indicate that the board is getting 5 volts to it to power it which of course is coming from our USB. So come all the way down. So this is our very first postcode that is detected. This generally is for like CPU initialization, you know, processor testing, and then this is CPU registers, let's see, page registers, and then RAM clearing. See, keyboard controller initialization, because again, this book has the codes in it, so that's what we're looking through here. Now, on this Toshiba, it's generally a combination of award BIOS codes and Phoenix BIOS codes. And then there's some codes that aren't even listed in here, which are generally manufacturer specific codes that you probably have to go to a website to find. So, like number seven there, for instance, is the CMOS, and it verifies that there's bad battery. And scrolling through all the various different codes here. And it'll jump around on there. Again, you generally we see FF last, but we're not quite there yet. Here we're doing some more thing, and generally they will go in ascending order as you scroll through them. So like 20 there. That's initializing the very first memory slot, which is slot 0, which is generally on the system board, slot 1, and slot 5. And that's because you do have some built-in memory on this computer, which is the first two slots, and then slot number 5 is the memory expansion module on this laptop if I wanted to add some. Scrolling through more foods. Getting higher. So generally this is how your card is going to work and then we're right up to FF again. So it's pretty simple to use. It's just depending on what you use it on. So the two big takeaways is that one, generally it's going to again be for laptops. Not all desktops generally will support outputting the BIOS data on the data pins of the parallel port. You'd have to use one of these style cards to get that information. And the second thing to keep in mind, because it uses 5 volt power off the of USB, you generally need to use a little 5 volt power bank or adapter to power the board, or you can power it from the laptop like I have here if it has a available USB port on it. The only thing you have to keep in mind is some laptops, when they're loading the operating system or something like that, they will reset or restart the USB part on the board there and that includes cycling the power so you're going to end up losing the memory on the test card here if it does that so generally you want to stop it before it tries to load the the operating system so it doesn't end up doing that but other than that that's pretty much the gist of how these little parallel port testing cards work for diagnosing your PC's BIOS So as a little extra, I have this one laptop here, which is having some startup problems. It's a Toshiba Satellite Pro 445 CTX, and it powers on and does the keyboard initialization, because you see the keyboard lights check on it. 
But that's as far as it goes. There's no video output and it doesn't continue beyond that point. So I suspect that it either has something going on with the built-in memory on the board or something with the video chip. So this is a good test to use this parallel port PC test card for. Now for this I do have to use a little USB power bank because the laptop does not initialize the USB to supply power or any devices on until after the video is initialized. So, get it started there and then let's power on the laptop and see if we can get some direction of where we need to go on this. So we got some startup codes. And it's halting at 0405 it looks like. And it's not proceeding any further. A lot of these codes are going to matter because it was just filling up the memory on this one. The laptop was off, so let me go back up. Zero and this is four and zero five from where we saw is where it was stopping. Yeah, so it went through the initialization process right there. So it stopped at number five. You can see from here pretty much what they cover. So, da, 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 da. so RAM refresh was number four, at least according to the award side. Otherwise, it's getting the CPU type, which I doubt is the issue because most of that CPU failures, I think, would have stopped a lot sooner. Number five. Yeah, his keyboard controller initialization, that makes sense. What else does it say? The bio stack. Now I'm thinking DMI, DMA initialization. In progress or failure. So, I doubt it's the keyboard controller failing to initialize, but we may have something on the dynamic memory addressing problem which again still may potentially point to an issue with memory. As I believe the video chip is actually a fair bit later on here. Now yeah, see, zero E is getting to you video memory and stuff. So it does still potentially look like some kind of memory issue here since it's stopping Potentially with dynamic memory addressing. It's again, I doubt the keyboard controller initialization is the issue. But for all I know, it could be, who knows. But that at least gives us some direction where to go on this laptop. So at least you get a little practical look of what this can do.